Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Tour on Tuesday. In this episode, we're going to be going through the audio setup here in the studio. How it's wired, how it all works, um, and, and give you like like a, a quick rundown of the gear I'm using as well. Um, so, uh, join me in, in, in this on this tour, um, and hopefully you guys get to learn a little bit. So, uh, here we go. Okay, um, so right now I'm in front of the console. This is the main console here um, in the studio. And um, so I'm, I'm gonna go through the console. I'm gonna go through this first. Um, this is a Midas M32. Um, I got this brand new um, right as they kind of came out. Um, at least I'm pretty sure. I got this um, right as I uh, actually graduated high school, which is a bunch of years ago. But uh, I love this thing. This thing's a, uh, it, it's awesome. So it's 32 channels in um, on, 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 on two faders. Um, and I'm gonna kind of uh, show you how I set this up. Um, so uh, page one through 16, which is here, um, a lot of this used to be drums. I used to have a really big kit set up um, over there, which I'll, I'll, I'll do some pictures that I have. Um, there used to be 11 to 12 mics on that kit, um, which, which was a lot. Um, now I kind of have what I call my jazz setup. Um, so this actually isn't fully accurate anymore. This is from a different project I was working on. I have six mics on the kit now. So I, I took my setup down a half, which is awesome. Um, so I have that and um, I always start with drums and then I go into guitars and bass and then keys, like keyboards or anything like that. Um, here are my second layer. These are moving faders, flying faders, motorized faders, whatever you want to call them. Um, I, I would put like vocals and anything else, you know, um, strings and other stuff. So that's kind of how I normally would set this up. How I have it set up in here is I have my drums, I have some open channels, I have the guitar wireless and the guitar system which sits over there, put some b-roll in, um, and then more open stuff, it's just how it's laid out. Um, and then I have um, instrument one through six, that is in here, um, I'll actually record vocals in here, which I, I've, I've recorded the vocals in here, I set them right, kind of right behind where the camera is right now is where I'll set everything up. And, uh, and, and then I have a bunch of more open stuff. I wanted it not to be so um, confined where I have to plug in a certain mic in a certain spot, just to have a lot of flexibility. So I have a lot of stuff that's open here. Uh, I have my auxiliary um, channels here, which is um, the auxiliary like assistant auxiliary power. So I actually have a um, like a auxiliary cable in the couch that I gotta keep in there that if anyone wants to plug in their laptop, like a producer or someone show me something, um, I have control of that right here and then you have a bunch of open stuff. Um, my auxiliary um, is pretty basic. Um, I have outboard our analog outboard gear behind me. Um, so it's kind of like a hybrid setup. Um, the, the, the Mac, so, so the Pro Tools, rig um, and then this has USB recording in it um, I use this sometimes I'm just doing like an easy demo track or something I'll use this so I have my USB um, playback here all my effects my effects returns all my monitor and um, and effect masters here so all, all the buses I use as like monitors um, so how this is set up here is my uh, my NS10s here, that, that I, I love these NS10s. My NS10s here, I have my master fader, and then a Tenoise, which are out here. I actually have on a on a, on a monitor output. And, and, and I wanted to set this console up so it's very easy to get to the most important things. And that's how I have it set up. Okay, so right here, I have my, 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 my quick assignments, is kind of what I guess they're called. Um, right off the bat, I have my Mac. So you actually see this fader move when I hit the, when I turn this knob. This is Pro Tools right here. Um, so so that's really helpful to have. Right? I don't have to be on this page. I actually can be mixing and turn up and down Pro Tools here. Um, next, I have my uh, my Tenoys. I have Tenoy left and Tenoy right um, here. And and the reason I don't sync them up is um, well, first off, there's an issue with the, with the sync synchronization and, and, and the pairing of them. And I kind of like having it separate in case if something's wrong. I actually can mute them individually, left and right, and and really hear an A and B of that. Um, and then far far out here, I have the assistant, what we call the assistant auxiliary, um, right there. And those are paired up since it's it's, it's a stereo signal there. Um, Right now, I have a Pro Tools session running. Um, so I, I have my Pro Tools faders over here and all my other faders over here. So if I don't have my Pro Tools up, I press this button right here. 
And now this turns into my DCA groups. So a DCA group, if you didn't know, is it takes a group of, um, of faders and it brings it down to one fader. It's um, digital, digital controlled amplitude is, is what I'm pretty sure it is. And so um, if I have my, 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 my drums here and I want to bring all the drums down, instead of having them like do this or bring them down individually, I can take my DCA and knock it down a little bit. And it will just take them all where they are relatively and bring them down. I have that for every single group here um, and I even have it for my outboard. Um, just, just if I want to bring all the outboard stuff down a little bit, I have that. Um, all the buses that, that are here are actually also over here. So I don't have to be on my bus so I can just do stuff like here and here. And this is um, all the matrix. I don't really use the matrix on this console at all actually. Um, but if I'm doing Pro Tools, I can be recording and, 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 and live tracking here and then uh, Pro Tools automation and automation and stuff um, stuff here. Um, I also have this set up um, over here on my quick assignments um, for EQ as well. So if I am, let's say I, I have my Pro Tools here, um, right now this actually mutes the Pro Tools computer as you can see right here. Um, but I also can pull up the EQ here on the, here on the, um, the screen, so I can do that, and it pulls up, this, it selects this, so if I'm somewhere else, the select goes on, select goes on now, and I can now EQ um, that, that here. I do have a little bit of an EQ just because of, there's a little bit of a, a ring, so I, I, I popped out that ring, but it doesn't affect my mixes at all. It's very, very slight here, so, um, so it's, it's, it's actually, I uh, gotta fix that. That's what that is, but I also have like my Tenoy left and right, and the auxiliary one, that was from, I think we're experimenting with some stuff, so that's what that's from. Um, okay, so that's the console. Oh, I also have a talkback uh, mic set up. You might see this little thing right here. This is actually a whole talkback mic system, and it's plugged into right here. Um, and uh, A is non-latching, so I hold it down, I can talk freely, I can look around, look up, and it'll actually pick up my voice. And then B is latching, so if I'm doing something and I want to have a full conversation with them, it'll pick that up. Um, so actually, I'm pretty sure, yep, so if you see here, when I talk, all these uh, go up and on, so because all the, except for the, the my monitors here, because there'll be a lot of feedback, I have my, my my um, talkback set up to all the um, the monitors. Um, so if I switch this off, you notice that they're not coming on. I can press this, it'll come on, it'll turn off, it'll come on, hey, 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 and it'll turn off. So um, that's what that is. So um, if you look at the back of this console, it doesn't look like there's no any mics plugged in. That is, a, that is actually kind of false. There's a lot of, there's output stuff plugged in right now, but um, I have a, um, an ethernet cable running from here into the racks behind me. Um, those racks behind me um, is where all the audio kind of begins and ends. Um, so um, let's go over to the racks and I'll show you how, what those look like. Okay, so right now I'm here sitting on the floor because the racks kind of split into two and I wanna, I wanna show you that. Okay, so we might have to put in some B-roll by the way. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go through the bottom rack and then the top rack um, next. So the bottom rack, I have the digital snake. So on the back of this, um, I have an ethernet cable that's plugged into the console. So this is where all the inputs are and, and kind of some outputs actually. This is where all the inputs are for, um, for the studio. They, they, they live right here. From here, they go into here. Um, we call this black net. Um, they're, they're, it's an inside joke, but we call this black net. It's, it's an XLR patch bay. Um, so from here to about here right now, these are the drums. Um, you can see some stuff's unplugged, some stuff isn't. Uh, this right here, so all this stuff here is um, on the other side of the couch over there. Um, and so like, for example, Let's say we're doing a session where the drums are in a different spot, but we like the EQ where they are. Um, and we want to move like a kick drum mic to a different location in here for whatever reason. I can actually just take this out and plug it into here. So now what used to be channel one is now 17. Um, and so I can kind of move some stuff around and uh, and, and it works like that, but I can do that with anything here in the studio. So um, this is the patch bay. This is the inputs and outputs down here. Um, so that that's kind of how that works. Okay. Um, also, going go, starting going again from down here. I have the amp for the Tenoys, 
Um, the computers are here. This is the amp for the NS10s. And then again, the patch bay starts here. Um, okay, so that, that's kind of how this is set up down here. I'm gonna move on to what's, uh, what's going on up there. Okay, so right now we're gonna go through the top uh, section of this rack here. Uh, we have a compressor and a gate. Uh, the last two here actually hooked up to like, basically I can have the, the main left and right of the console go right into here if I wanna really just compress the session just a little bit. I have that and then this can go back into Pro Tools. I have an Ampex tube limiter um, that, there's kind of a funny story behind that, but that, that, that's what that is. And then BlackNet down here. Um, you know, I, I also use a lot of plugins with my Pro Tools sessions as well, but sometimes it's nice to like go to a knob and like really like change the the ratio or come here and change the attack and really grab a knob and spin. So um, I, I really like that, um, th th that, that feature that I have here in my studio. So, um, okay, right now I'm gonna show you how I would set up for a vocal session and, and, and my, my theory and my logic behind it. So uh, let's start setting up a session. Okay, so right now we're gonna set up uh, for like a vocal session. And if it was just the one vocalist doing some like overdubs or, or some basic vocals, this is how I would set it up. Um, it also depends if they're gonna be performing this live. Do I want them to have like a live in front of an audience feel or more of a studio feel? Um, so I'll actually set up both. I'll set up a studio version and what I would think as a live version. So first things first is mic selection. Okay, so right now we're here in front of my, my, my equipment locker. Um, one mic is out right now, um, doing it, it's been on out for about a month on a recording project. Um, so I, I'm down one mic, which is fine. So I'm just gonna use um, this mic right here. Uh, I'll actually pull it out and I leave the box in here. So this here is a it's a simulation mic. It's a, it's an awesome mic. This is a a, um, a U67 simulation mic. Um, this also comes with a bunch of different capsules, so I can change it for a U67 or a C12 to a U47. But just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to keep the same same capsule on there. So take that. I also need a power supply, and we have a bunch of cables right here. Okay, I also need to pick um, the correct cable. So I've labeled this, it's the correct cable. And we'll go with this cable. I'm gonna show you why I need two cables for the setup um, here in a little bit. So I'm gonna set this up now. Okay, I'm also gonna grab my, uh, my mic stand. I'm actually gonna use this one for live, for the live setup. And then this is the one for this, um, for this mic, that shock mount came with this mic, so I'm gonna use that. Okay, actually, now it's time to set up. Alrighty, so I'll put this one here, gotta put this mic stand back. And um, so this mic, I'm gonna put on the stand first. Um, that black box, by the way, is what's called the power supply. So it actually brings like power, like, like proper like electricity to the mic, so the mic can work. Okay, so that feels safe about that. I'll keep a this one here just for now so I can find it here in a little bit and I'm gonna start plugging in uh, the power supply okay the power supply is plugged in I'm gonna turn it on here all right it is on and uh, so that's on I also want to set up the mic so um, normally I would have um, my assistant Cole helped me with setup as well. So I can tackle like mic placement and mic setup and he can tackle the technical plugging in, you know, the, the mic um, into the, the power supply and into the wall and make sure that's um, all good and, and, and safe. So right now I'm just gonna get this set up. Uh, just, I'm gonna pretend like I'm the artist, I guess. Um, so I would set it up kind of like this. Um, I don't have an extra windscreen for this mic. I kind of realized you didn't need it. Um, I mean, it came with one, but th th this this has a pretty good windscreen already on it. So I'm just not gonna um, not gonna use one. Okay, so that's set up right, and we're gonna now plug in the mic. So first, gotta plug it in to the power supply, and then um, I'm I'm a big on cable management. Uh, making sure everything what's called no lane so straight lines right angles so I'm gonna go straight line and a kind of like a right angle put the uh, the excess at the base here 
and go ahead and wrap this around the stand just so you know sometimes you have excess which is fine I'm gonna wrap this around for uh, a strain relief and then plug this bad boy in there we go that's plugged in the only thing is right now it actually won't go to the console this can't get to the console yet um, and here's why so um, right now the only thing plugged in is the, the the mic into the power supply but the power supply needs to then be plugged into um, whatever you're recording to if that's an interface a console um, or you're using a snake to get to the console in this case I'm using a snake so I'm gonna go ahead and um, plug in doesn't matter which way but I'll plug in the snake first and then run this all the way to the power supply and plug in audio awesome so right now this mic is ready to be uh, mic checked and ready to go it is plugged into our, our power or our power plugged into our audio snake and plugged into the mic so this is how I would set this up um, it's very clean um, looks very kind of put together very professional and that's a big thing about me here and even in the studio but especially live is uh, straight lines right angles and always look professional so right now I'm gonna set up the, um, the the live mic and this is how I actually will do it live as well uh, I'm gonna grab my stand here um, and there's a proper way to put up um, a mic stand Okay, so right now I'm here behind the drum kit. Um, it's a very easy, this is very much like a jazz kit. Um, one tom, one floor tom, uh, three cymbals, hi-hat, kick snare, very, very, very basic. Okay, so I'm gonna start here with the snare drum. On the snare drum here, I have a, a regular snare mic. It's called an i5 um, by Audix. Um, love this mic, just an amazing mic. Um, used it for many years, had, had, I've had this one for many, many years. Um, so that's on the snare. No, no bottom miking on this kit. Um, just didn't feel like I needed it really. Um, and so I have that. Um, on the inside here, um, I normally have a um, Onyx D6, um, but right now it's, uh, it's being used for something else, so it's, it's not in there. Um, and then um, here on the, uh, the high tom, I have an Onyx uh, Micro D, I'm pretty sure they're called. Awesome tom mics, awesome tom mics. They have the same here on the floor tom. Um, and then I have like a, like a cheap alternative to a uh, SM57 um, on my uh, on my rides and kind of capturing the cymbals. Um, and then I have a, another another cheap uh, pencil uh, pencil mic here underneath the hi hat caption a hi hat. Um, and I've noticed that just kind of gives the the, the 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 kit some some life in the mix. Um, this this kind of can get picked up by. Um, by either mic, the, the snare mic or the hi-hat mic, he actually does get picked up by. So that, that's that's why I don't have an overhead mic. I didn't like an overhead mic um, because it kind of got in the way. I feel like if I want one, I'll add one, but I normally don't need one um, in here because it's, it's quite small. So um, my big thing on this kit was cable management. It's Yes, there's cables here, but you don't see a lot of cables. Um, if you look here at my, at my snake down here, um, I have a bundle of cable, which you know you can't really hide the big bundle, so that's fine. But you can see it's a lot of straight lines here, um, on and, and it's not a lot plugged in. I, I gave myself a bunch of um, bunch of options for, for different things. So I also have monitors. So I have A, B, and C and D uh, monitors, so I can plug in in ear monitors um, right into that. Um, I have some amps that I that I'll use, like my um, headphone amps that I'll use for that. Um, and if you notice, I have like brushes here. Um, but but they're pretty hard, so they, they kind of mimic. Um, they're not as they're not great for um, like a rock song, or they're great for jazz. They sound really great on cymbals, um, so that's why I like to use these a lot. At least just when I'm practicing. Um, so um, that that's the drums. Um, and I have, I actually also have used the snake and ran a long cable into there if I run. There's only six inputs in there, and there's 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 um, twelve here, so I have, I have another six out here. Um, so I'll actually, you know, kind of split it sometimes. So, um, so that that's like the drums. That's the mics on the drums. And uh, let's head back into the uh, the control room. Well, what we call the control room. 
So that is the final episode of Tour on Tuesday. I've shown you a lot. I've shown you my vlog setup. I've shown you my everyday carry. I've shown you my guitar collection and how I restring guitars. I've shown you the red setup and, and, and the applications I use for the red and the different setups that I have. Um, I've also shown you here, like today, I've shown you my audio setup and the different types of audio setups that I have and and what this uh, studio is capable of. Hopefully you guys learned a little something um, here on this little series I've done. Um, and I'm, I'm already planning new content and more content. So um, thank you guys. I will see you guys very, very soon. Um, and so, you know, if you take anything away from this series, um, DM me, post it, tag me in it. I would love to see what you guys have learned. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you soon. Peace, see ya. All right.